Hi there, this is Dr. Vahid Aryadus from the National Institute of Education of Nanyang Technological University of Singapore. In this video, uh, I'm going to discuss two options under general, general linear model univariate, that's ANOVA in this presentation, uh, which I actually promised to discuss in just the previous video. And these two options are contrast and safe. So let's get started with uh, this analysis. I'm going to close this for the moment just to show you what uh, independent and dependent variables I'm going to look into. This this uh, data set is the core data set which has been uh, which has been collected in Singapore. In previous videos, I have mentioned where this data has been collected in, and uh, I have provided uh, some information. So here I'm going to use uh, stream as uh, one of my uh, independent variables and I have three streams as you can see normal technical, normal academic and express as well as gender and gender has two levels zero for males and one for females. And my dependent variable here actually it could be any of these, these uh, uh, mean scores grammar, vocabulary, comprehension. For this presentation, I think I'm going to use this. That's uh, situation, situational writing total scores. This, this is writing test, which has been administered to the students participating in this study. So I'm going to go to uh, general linear model, choose univariate, and choose uh, the first independent variable, that's the stream, and the second independent variable, that's gender, I'm going to go down and find my situation writing total as my dependent variable. So I'm not going to choose uh, other options here because I have discussed this. This is a two-way ANOVA. Oops, sorry. This is a two-way ANOVA because we have two independent variables. Now, what I'm going to do is to uh, click on contrast. Uh, in this pop-up window, uh, you will see my two independent variables. And the kind of contrast I'm going to choose here is simple, and then click change, and for gender again, simple, and click change. What it's, it's going to do for us is a pairwise comparison. That is, it gives us something which is pretty similar to this post hoc analysis. Uh, just do this again. Okay, so it's going to give us some. Um, results which is similar to this post hoc analysis. So what I'm going to show you is that contrasts uh, provides us very similar information as post hoc analysis. And therefore, you don't really have to choose both. As long as you choose either post hoc or contrast, it will be fine. Definitely, I will, I will definitely go for post hoc analysis if I want to do some rigorous comparisons. Because even though the results are similar, they, there, there are some differences in the p-values that they generate. So I'm going to just do away with those drawings. And I'm going to click Continue. Uh, and then post-hoc analysis, I just move a stream over to uh, post-hoc test for in this area. Gender, is not, it's not necessary to move gender because it only has two levels. And post hoc analysis is not done for any variable that has got two levels. I will choose Toki, some people might choose Bonfrani, and so on and so forth. I have discussed uh, quite briefly uh, which, one, which one of these uh, post hoc analysis techniques to use. So I'm going to continue. Um, so let's move, move on with, just move ahead with this. Uh, and later on, I will just show you how to use save. So let's click OK and see what we'll get. Uh, the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at, uh, and I'll discuss this further in the, just a video that will follow up this video, is uh, the, the interaction effect between stream and gender. Uh, here you see that the significance value is way greater than 0 0.05, and therefore there is no interaction. I will discuss this like I said, in, in more details, and I'll tell you what interaction means. So if the interaction level is significant right here, then really we, we're, oh gosh, uh, let me just choose uh, this box here. Great, this is 
better. So if the interaction level were significant, we wouldn't be looking at uh, the effects of stream and gender on the dependent variable, which is uh, the, the situational writing, this one. Uh, uh, so I'll get back to this in, in the following video. Now, uh, let's just move down to uh, these pairwise comparisons because I just forgot to highlight these two. There is a significant difference between the two levels of gender, as you see here, and a significant difference um, among the three levels of stream because the p-values are way smaller than 0 0.05. So what our uh, post-hoc analysis does for us is to compare uh, normal technical, that's for stream, our first, um, where is it, where is it? Right here, uh, secondary school stream our first independent variable, normal technical against normal academic, normal technical against express, and so on and so forth. So everything, every comparison that you see is statistically significant. That, that is, the observed differences between the mean of express and normal technical is statistically significant. Now, what I would uh, like to highlight here is uh, the, the similarities between this multiple comparison, and I'm going to right click on this, copy into an Excel sheet uh, right here. I think that will be easier to compare. Multiple comparisons, that's from the post hoc analysis. And this is for, uh, like I said, for uh, the stream. And And this one, uh, which is actually the, the output of the contrast, the contrast results, and paste it right here. Okay, I think we can compare it easily here. Uh, we have got a p-value, a p-value of very small p-value, as you can see from here, right in the corner. Uh, this is a comparison between level one and level three, level one being normal normal technical and normal three being express. They have a sign statistically significant difference, while as you see, normal technical and express also have a statistically significant difference here. Uh, the p-values, like I said, are somewhat different. They're estimated differently across two comparisons, but they're basically are, are telling us the same story and the statistics are quite converging here. Um, I can I can do the same thing for gender. You can you can find you see level one versus level two has a significant difference, and uh, of course uh, sorry the, the post hoc analysis is not run uh, is not run for two level variables which I just mentioned before. But there is a significant difference between the two, as you can see right here in this in, uh, as indicated by this small p-value is very small. And in the very first uh, table of uh, test of between subjects, which as you can see, is, is pretty small. You see the p-values are exactly the same. So uh, in conclusion, a contrast uh, here, uh, contrasts and post-hoc analysis can provide us with more or less uh, the same output. But I should add that post-hoc analysis outputs uh, are pretty more comprehensive and useful. That's the first thing I, that I wanted to mention. Second one is safe. So far, and in previous videos, I have mentioned that there are three assumptions for ANOVA and, of course, uh, for, uh, for t-tests to be met uh, before we go ahead and conduct the, the tests, perform the tests. Um, one is the normality of the data. Uh, two is the homogeneity of uh, the variances or the equality of the variances of the groups. And, and three is uh, the balance in terms of the sample. Uh, uh, something that I have not discussed so far is actually um, what, something that has not be paid, uh, been paid a lot of attention to in applied linguistics, and that's uh, the uh, normality of the residuals. 
So here, uh, through save, we can get the residuals. Uh, I'm going to get standardized residuals. There are quite a few different types of you know residuals, and click OK. And the residual is a part of the um, you know because ANOVA is like a regression model. Uh, and in, in another video, I will discuss regressions in details. But just for the time being, let's remember that ANOVA is like a regression model. It tries to explain uh, the uh, observed variables by fitting a, a line into uh, into the variables, into into the data. Now, a part of the data that's not explained by that line or that by that mathematical equation is called residual. And residuals can be standardized, can be unstandardized. They come in different forms. Um, what is important here, and that's an important assumption of ANOVA, which should not be violated, is the fact that they should be normally distributed. So it's very easy, really, to, to uh, check if the residuals of ANOVA are normally distributed. Go to Save, go to Residuals, check off Standardized, and click continue and then just click OK. You don't have to check uh, any output, just go back to your data and you see this ZRE1. That's the variable that was created and saved uh, in our analysis here. Of course, we have some missing data here. That's why we've got dots here. They're automatically just uh, deleted uh, list wise and residual start from here. Now I would like to uh, check if they are normally distributed. There are different ways, of, as we have discussed before in another video. I'm going to explore and move this. This is my residual, because this is the residual for situational writing total in, uh, in the ANOVA test that I run. Move it to dependent variable. And you can choose statistics. For example, I, I, I would like to look at the outliers, plots, I really go for histograms, that's useful, and normality plots, tests. Uh, the options are fine, and just click OK. There we are. Uh, this plot is nice. Uh, it shows that my data is more or less normally distributed. We have a little bit of uh, kurtosis, which is, you know, this... Uh, which is indicated by this part of the graph, uh, but that's fine. Now, uh, in, in, a, in, in another video, I have explained that uh, Kolmogorov, Smirnov, and Shapiro-Wilk are not very suitable for samples which are greater than 300, and this sample is way greater than 300. We have uh, 1,796 degrees of freedom with uh, the sample size of uh, 1,800 something. Yeah, this, this is uh, this is sample size actually. This is the sample size and the degrees of freedom are the same. Uh, so we can look at the skewness and kurtosis, which are pretty small. Actually, to to my surprise, the kurtosis value is pretty small here. It's almost zero, and skewness is just slightly deviating from zero. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is uh, strong evidence that, uh, oops, I mean, let me just get this right. Uh, skewness and kurtosis statistics are, uh, they provide strong evidence that the data is norm, the residuals are normally distributed. Therefore, another assumption of ANOVA has been met according to the uh, uh, the no, based on the normality of our residuals. I hope you'll find this video useful. Uh, if you think it was helpful in any way, please give it a like uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, following this video, I'm going to discuss a two-way ANOVA. Uh, please stay tuned in. Thank you and have a good day.